You get something to write with and something to write on. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord God, we thank you once again, Father God, that we're able to come to your throne once again, Lord God. Just lifting you on high, just exhorting you because of who you are. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're the Alpha, the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the first and the last. And there is none that is greater than you, Father. Father, on tonight, once again, we thank you, Lord God, for all of our faithful listeners, Lord, Lord God, for those who's on the internet, the phone lines, Father God, and those who are sitting by the radio, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for them, Father God, because we know, Father God, that you don't want your people to be destroyed for a lack of knowledge, Lord God. So we thank you for all those who are listening on tonight, Father God. Father God, once again, we are forever more grateful for 92.9. Because of 92.9, Father God, you have made a way that you said you would make a way out of no way, Father God, that your people would be able to hear about your son Jesus, Lord God. So you want no one to perish, Father God. You want all to come to the glory of you, Father God. And we thank you on tonight, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your son who you have chosen on tonight, Lord God, to minister unto your people, Father God. We thank you for him. We thank you for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the revelation that you have given him, Father. And most of all, Lord God, as I always tell you, we take nothing for granted. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for us, Father God, who gave up his life, Father God, so we would be able to have life and life more abundantly, Father. And we thank you for every listening ear, Father God, and every receptible heart out there on tonight. And we take nothing for granted. We won't cease to give you praises, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Again, it is a wonderful opportunity and a privilege. We thank God for his word that's still alive and powerful and sharper than any two words. So today, Lord, we're going to stand in his words because the entrance word give us, give us light. We use that light as a guide to our part and lamp to our feet. We always like to look at the Bible and hear what it's saying to us because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Paul said to young Timothy from a child, I was known the Holy Scripture, which was able to make thee wise. But yet he tell Timothy to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly divine the Word of God. The early Christian church, the Berean Christian, they searched the Scriptures out daily to see if these things were so. Well, then that's a good pattern to follow, because faith commit by hearing, and by hearing, and by hearing. Faith doesn't come by having heard it. Faith come it by hearing, and by hearing, by the Word of God. So we should always hear the Word of God. We started a mini-series earlier this week, and we want to pick up where we left off and hear what God has to say to us in His holy, written, precious Word. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, subtitle, A Lion in the Streets. Proverbs, chapter 22, and look at the 13th verse. Let's pick up and do a little review before we move ahead because there are some people who were not there before they are today so they know where we were, where we are, and where we're going so we'll have some continuity. Amen? Proverbs chapter 22. Look at the 13th verse. The slothful man said, There's a lion without. I shall be slain in the streets. Now, think about it. You don't have lions walking the streets of <laughs> any city, just walking around streets like that. I don't think so. But he said, there's a lion in the street, look at it, that 13th verse, the slothful man, not a slothful man, the slothful man. The slothful man said, there's a lion without, I shall be slain in the street. He's not going to slay anybody else, just going to slay him. So he come out of his house, the lion is just waiting out his door just for him. This city that we in here have approximately 8 million people in this city, but the lion is just waiting for him. Can you see that? Proverbs chapter 26, get something to write with and something to write on, a lion in the streets, S-T-R-E-E-T-S, one lion in the streets. How you like that? The lion is omnipresent. Everywhere you go, there's a lion, an excuse to fail. Proverbs chapter 22, and look at the 13th verse. The slothful man said, there's a lion in the way, a lion is in the streets. A lion, singular, in the streets, plural. How you like that? A slothful man. Excuse to fail. Can you see that? Second Corinthians chapter 4, and let's pick up where we left off as we review a bit. Second Corinthians chapter 4, the slothful man said, Second Corinthians chapter 4, and look at the 18th verse. Get something to write with and something to write on. 
2 Corinthians chapter 4. Look at the 18th verse. While we look not at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen, or things which are seen are temporal, or things which are not seen are eternal. How are we going to look at things which are not seen? Isn't that a strange reading? We're looking at things that are not seen. Things that are seen are temporary. Things that are not seen are eternal. But we're looking at things that are not seen. Are we like, notice he said that not only him, Paul, who given credit for writing this to the believers at Corinth, but he's also speaking about us. There's only one body of Christ. He's writing to the body of Christ. He said we. So all of us walk are things that are not seen, not things that are seen. Things that are seen are temporary, but things that are not seen are eternal. Well, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit. Well, then, we could look at it as this also, that the body is temporary, but the spirit is eternal. Man is a spirit, live in a body, have a soul that live in a body. So the spirit part of us is eternal, the body part of us is temporary. The outward man is perishing day by day, but the inward man is renewed day by day. How do you like that? So the inward man is on heaven time, the earth man is on earth time. He's perishing day by day. So we look at things that are not seen, the world of the spirit, not the things that are seen. Look at those verse again. For while we, all of us, look not at things that are seen, but things that are not seen, or things that are seen are temporal, but things that are not seen are eternal. Next chapter over, chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Doing a bit of review before we move ahead. Hallelujah, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And look at the 7th verse. Put your finger on the 7th verse. Get something to write with and something to write on. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Look at the 7th verse. For we, for we, all of us, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We, all of us. All of us. So if we are Christian, we part of the body of Christ because this is written to the body of Christ. This is not for those folks out there because the Bible said a natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. He can't receive them you know, because they are spiritually discerned. So we, speaking to us, we walk by faith, not by sight. So if we can see it, we don't walk by it. If we don't see it, we walk by it. Or what you don't see is spirit. Well, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Jesus said in John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. So we walk by the spirit, in other words, we walk by the Word, not by the senses. Can you see that? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Big John, chapter 20. And let's see something here. Big John, chapter 20. And let's see what God is saying to us. Big John, chapter 20. Big John, chapter 20. Get something to write with and something to write on. A lion in the street. Well, if you look at things that are seen, you're going to be defeated. If you look at things that are not seen. And we see people who look at things that are seen, they walk by sight. People who look at things that are not seen, they walk by faith. Big John chapter 20. And let's pick up a few verses. Pick up the 24th verse. Big John chapter 20. Let's pick up the 24th verse. But Thomas, one of the twelve, which called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and trust my hand to the side, I will not believe. After eight days again the disciples were within, Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the door being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hand. Reach hither thy hand, and trust in my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Verse 28, Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, my God, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou believe, blessed are they which have not seen me yet believe. So the people who want to see to believe, they're not blessed. They're walking by sight, not by faith. So anybody who walk by sight, they're not blessed. We're going to read those verses again. We're going to read it. You say, when I see the money, then I'm going to believe. When I see the, when I get healed, then I'll believe I'm healed. Uh-uh. 
You have to call those things which be not as though they were. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the sick say, I am healed. You have to call those things which be not as though they are not. Can you see that? So he, he said, so much because you still believe, but blessed is the one who didn't see. So we walk by faith, not by sight. We look at things that are not seen, not the things that are seen. Things that are seen are temporary, things that are not seen are eternal. Look at those verses again. But Thomas, one of the twelve, which is called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see his hands and the print of the nail, and put my fingers in the print of the nail, and trust my hand to the side, I will not believe. So he wanted to see to believe. And we come from that world out there, they say, Seeing is believing. Seeing is not believing. Seeing is knowing. Believing is seeing. When you believe, you shall see. What things do every desire when you pray? Believe you shall receive them and then you shall have them. Believe first and receive after. What things do every desire when you pray? Believe you receive them and you shall. Shall is future. Shall receive them. Believe first, shall after. I believe I'm healed first, then you get healed after. I believe I have the money first, then the money come after. I believe I have the husband first, then the husband come after. I believe I have the wife first, then come after. I believe I have the child first, then they come after. Believe first. Out in that world, all of us come from that world out there and say, seeing is believing. Seeing is knowing. Once you have it, you don't have to believe, you know. When you don't have it, you believe. To, to see. He said unto Martha, said I not unto you, if you believe, you shall see. Her brother been dead four days. He said, by this time he's thinking, he said, Martha said I not unto you, if thou believe, thou shall see. You have to believe first, then you see after. What things, T-H-I-N-G-S, you desire when you pray, believe and you shall. Believe and you shall. Believe and you shall. Believe first. So believing is not seeing, believing is knowing. Seeing is believing. Look at that again. After eight days, again, the disciples were within Thomas with them. Then said Jesus, the door being shut, stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Verse 27. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hands, and trust in my side, and be not faithless. So when you want to see to believe, you're faithless. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So people who want to see to believe, they're faithless. You can't please God. You can't please God. You can't please God without faith. It's impossible to please God. So when you want to see to believe your faith, can you read? Let's read that again. Look at those two verses, 26 and 27. After eight days again, the disciples were in Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the door being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hand. Reach hither thy hand, and trust my side, and be not faithless but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou believe, blessed are they which have not seen, yet believe. So the person who believes without seeing is blessed. The person who sees to believe is not blessed. Can you see that? Two sides of the room. Let's go some more. Let's go back to Numbers chapter 13. People who walk by sight can't please God. We walk by faith, not by sight. If you see a lion, people with faith don't see any lions. Numbers chapter 13. A lion in the streets. Numbers chapter 13. Get something to write with. And something to write on. And hear what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious words. Numbers chapter 13. And let's read a few verses. The children of Israel spent 430 years into Egyptian bondage. God sent a deliverer, Moses, to get them out of there after many signs and wonders before Pharaoh. They crossed the Red Sea, and they went into Kadesh Barnea. While in Kadesh Barnea, he sent 12 spies to spy the land to see if everything that God says so. So they went and spy the land, 12 spies, and they come back, and they give God their report when they come back um, from spying out the land. So let's pick up part of the story in Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13, look at this, picking up part of the story. Those who walk by sight and those who walk by faith. Those who walk by sight cannot please God. He said, blessed is the one who didn't see yet believe, but they that didn't see and believe are blessed. So look at these two sets of people and see if this you can parallel your life with this. Look at this here. Numbers chapter 13. Let's pick it up at the 25th verse. Numbers chapter 13. A lion in the streets. Look at verse 25. And they returned from searching out the land after 40 days. And they went and they came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh. And they brought back words unto them. And all the congregation showed them the fruits of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land where thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. 
This is the fruits of it. Nevertheless, nevertheless, look at those, look at those folks who walk by sight and those who walk by faith. Those who walk by sight can't please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Those who walk by sight are faithless. You don't please God. Verse 28, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. The cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the turn of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jubicites and the Amorites dwelled in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, by the coast of Jordan. Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able. Now here you have some people saying they couldn't do it, and some said they couldn't do it. Those who say we could do it, those are the ones who are blessed. Those who say we couldn't do it, those are the ones who are not blessed. So you have those that are blessed and those that are not blessed. Those who walk in my sight and those who walk in my faith. Verse 31. But the men that went up with them said, we, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. How they know? You just went and spied the line. You just walked through the line. Spies don't go out through the city with a big sign saying we are spies, become the spies. Spies go in there undercover. So they just went undercover and they, they suddenly look at these people and said they are strong. How do you know that? You ever had an encounter with those folks? Spies go in the night, spies go, you know, under, undercover. Look at this. Look at verse 31. But the men that went up with us said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land where they went to search out under the throne of Israel, saying that the land through which we have gone up to search it is a land that each of the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in the land are men of great stature. Liars. Liars. Look at verse 33. And they saw the giants, the son of Anik, which come out of giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshopper, so we are in their sight. How do they know that? They went by night, they spied the land. Caleb and Joshua could see everything good, but all they could see is bad. Ten of them said, no, look at this, go over to the 14th chapter. Numbers chapter 14. And look at the 30th verse. Numbers chapter 14. Look at the 30th verse. Those who walk by faith and those who walk by sight. People who are always looking at that, they never, they always, they always, doubt always have a bad report. Sight always have a bad report. Numbers 14, look at the 30th verse. Doubtless you shall not come into the land concerning which I swear unto dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. So 12 of them went to spy the land, just two of them say yes, 10 of them say no. The two that say yes went into the land, and the two that say, the 10 that say no never went into the promised land. So you see, God have a lot of promises, but if you doubt God, if God said that you heal, and you say that you're sick, you call God a liar, you're not going to get it. If he said that you're rich, my God supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, and you telling people that you're poor, well, you call God a liar, you're not going to get it. The ten that say we couldn't do it, everything is there, giants in the land, and everything is big and bad in the land, and we like grass up in the side, you're not going. Caleb and Joshua is the only two went into the promised land. The other ten never going. Why? They walk in by sight, not by faith. Always a lion in the streets for those folks. Can you see that? Look at this here. First Samuel chapter 17. <clears throat> First Samuel chapter 17. And let's see what God is saying to us in his holy written precious word. First Samuel chapter 17. Look at the 24th verse. Put your finger on the 24th verse. Yeah, look at this. Now, look, look at this. This amazed me. Just look at, look at this. First Samuel 7, look at the 24th verse. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, singular, all the men, plural, when they saw the man, singular, all of them, unanimously, all of them, look at it. When all the men of Israel saw the man, they fled from him and were so afraid. Now, they didn't say the man say anything to them. He didn't throw a spear at them. He didn't throw a hand grenade or anything. They didn't pull out a gun. No, he didn't say all. They just saw the man. The man, didn't, they didn't say nothing in this scripture here that they said they had a conversation with him. And he pulled out a sword and he did something. He lift up a wall and threw it at them or anything like that. All they, they, can, can you read? Look at it. They went in promised land. They seen the giants. Well, how you know? how you know you couldn't be the giants? Well, they're stronger than we, we are grass up on their giants. Everybody rich, we are poor. Everybody white, we are black. Everybody from somewhere else, we, we you know, every, is there always a company, a lion in the streets? Look at it, look at the 24th verse. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, 
fled from him and were so afraid. All the men, all the men. How many men were in Israel? A million, half a million, quarter million, a hundred thousand. How many men? Everybody run from one man. Can you see that? Hallelujah. Look at this. First Samuel 28. They walk in by sight. You could never please God walking by sight. Never. Based on the Bible. Based on the Bible. Based on the B.I.B. Early. Walking by sight. Thomas, because you see me, you believe. Blessed is the one who didn't see yet believe. So those who believe without seeing, those are blessed. Who want to see to believe, they're not blessed. First Samuel 28. And look at the first king of Israel going to war with the Philistines. And look, look, look at what sight could do to you, walking by sight. We look at things that are not seen, not things that are seen. Things that are seen are temporary. Whoever it is you've seen, whatever you've seen is temporary. What are not seen are eternal. We walk by faith, not by sight. Those who walk by sight never please God. Those who walk by faith please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. First Samuel 28, let's pick it up at the third verse. First Samuel 28. <clears throat> and let's pick up the third verse. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel lamented him, and they buried him in Ramah, even his own city. And Saul put away those that had familiar spirit and wizard out of the land. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came to pitch in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel, all Israel, all Israel, all Israel, and pitch in Gilboa. When Saul saw the host, he looked at them from a distance. <coughs> haven't exchanged any bullets, haven't seen any spare, haven't said anything. Else. He looked at them from a distance. Look at that. Look at it. When Saul saw the host of the Philistine, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. Yeah, that's all he see, just see. They didn't say anything, they didn't say anything. All the men of Israel saw Goliath, they saw him, they, they fled. Now he just look at their troops, you don't know what's, what might they have, you don't know what kind of military force, but you just look at, let me read that again. If you walk by sight, you'll never please God. Those who walk by sight never please God. God wants you walking by faith. Look at it. And the Philistines gathered themselves, verse 4, together, and came and pitched in Shunem, and Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilbar. When Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was so afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. And all the men inquired of the Lord by him and so on. And God was not speaking to them because he got himself into sin and God cut off his phone. He can't speak to God. Can you see that? But all he do, he saw. Well, it's just like Thomas. It's just like Thomas. He said, unless I see, I'm not going to believe. He appeared to Thomas. He said, Thomas, if you want to see to believe, you're not blessed. You know, you're going up against these troops. You look at the same thing with Gideon. He's going out to battle. You have 32,000. Well, God said, I can't get no glory in that. You're going to take the glory. You're going to say, I did it. I, Gideon, did it. No, you have, I can't get any glory in that. So send some of those people home. So he sent 22,000 home and he left with 10,000. God said, I still couldn't get any glory in that. I couldn't get it. I have to get the glory. So put them through the test and two pass the test, 300 pass the test, and 9,700 go home. Now I could get some glory. They take this 300 now and you go behind them and you, tell, you do what I said to tell you to do. You say the sword of the Lord and the sword of Gideon, you shout, put a pitch and a lamp in one or a sword in one. You do that, you get the victory. Crazy battle plan. But it work. Seems foolish, but it work. You go wrong the walls of Jericho one time for six days, go wrong seven times in seven days, shouting the walls gonna fall. That's crazy. Yeah, but it work. Yeah, but it work. So here Saul saw, and because he saw, he fled. No victory. Anytime there's fear, there's no victory. Anytime there's fear, there's no victory. Can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Matthew. Matthew chapter 14. Let's come a little closer to home. Matthew chapter 14. If we could practice this on a daily basis, because they said the Berean Christians search the scriptures out daily, not weekly, not monthly, not yearly, daily, and practice this all the time by walking by faith, not by sight. What does the word say? What does the word say? What does the word say? Search the scriptures, see what the word says. What is it about husband, about wives, about children, about church, about tithing, about love? What does the Bible say? We walk by faith, not by sight. But whatever the Bible says, that's faith. Can you see that? Matthew 14. And look at this. All again, sight. Look at, look at, just looking. Watch this. 
Matthew 14, pick up the 25th verse. Matthew 14. Look at the 25th verse. And the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went on them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking in the sea, they were, when they saw him walking in the sea, they, look at it, they were troubled, saying, It is the Spirit, and they cry for fear. But straightway Jesus speak unto them and said, Be of good cheer, as I be not afraid. You see, but they saw. They just saw. They afraid for saw. Look at Peter, verse 28. Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come out there in the water. And he said, Come. Peter come down out of the ship and walk on the sea to go to Jesus. And when he saw, when he saw, he was doing fine, walking, fine. He was doing fine. He take his eyes off Jesus, so he take his eyes off the word. And people who stop coming to church, who stop paying the tithes, who stop getting things of God, who are not busy with things of God, they stop, they start